so are you all hope all of you are taking very good care of your health and take care and stay safe so now let's continue with the chapter structure of the atom in our previous class we had discussed about the structure of atom with respect to different elements in the periodic table we had also discussed about what is atomic number mass number and valency of the atom of an element now uh, let's recall what we had learned and i told you atomic number of an element is nothing but the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom and number of protons is equal to number of electrons that means if you know the atomic number of atom of an element you can easily know what is the number of protons present in the atom of an element as well as you can calculate the number of electrons present in the atom of an element because all the three values will be same because in an atom which is neutral so number of positive charges that is protons the subatomic particle protons are positively charged and the subatomic particles electrons are negatively charged so an atom is always neutral so for an atom to be neutral number of protons will be always equal to number of electrons so if there are three protons in the nucleus of an atom there will be three electrons distributed in various shells of an atom so we have seen that um, the electronic uh, configuration that we had discussed in the previous class electronic configuration is nothing but distribution of electrons in the various shells around the nucleus and the different shells also i told you we have uh, we had named and numbered them as it is 1 2 3 from the interior of the atom to the uh, outer um, outside of an atom and the first shell is known as k shell then l shell n shell n and o and also i told you how to calculate what is the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in per shell so k shell can accommodate only two electrons l shell can accommodate eight electrons and m shell can accommodate 18 then 32 and so on so now let's concentrate on how to find out the number of protons neutrons and electrons and the valency and whether an element is a metal or non metal for the next elements in the periodic table that is element number 11 to element number 18 now in the periodic table you can see element number 11 is sodium which is given by the symbol na and the atomic number is 11 next element is magnesium atomic number 12 the element with atomic number 13 is aluminum silicon is 14 phosphorus 15 sulfur is atomic number 16 chlorine has atomic number of 17 and argon is having the atomic number of 18 now let's calculate the number of protons neutrons and electrons as we did in the previous class by on this um, table now see the another value which is which i have written over here is mass number mass number is nothing but it is the collectively i told you the protons and neutrons present in the nucleus of an atom collectively it is known as nucleons and nucleons the mass of an atom of an element is only concentrated in the a uh, tiny region that is known as a nucleus of an atom so the mass number is given that is nothing but it is represented by the letter a atomic number is represented by the letter z mass number is nothing but proton plus neutron so there are three subatomic particles protons positively charged neutrons no charge but proton and neutron has same uh, mass that is one unit and electrons are negatively charged with the mass very very small or we considered as negligible zero is a mass of electrons now from this let's see the first element that is sodium sodium it, uh, the atomic number is 11 so number of protons will be same as that so the number of protons also will be 11 that is uh, same as the atomic number so i told you number of protons will be always equal to number of electrons so number of electrons also will be equal to 11 now the mass number of sodium is 23 so how many neutrons will be there 23 minus 11 so how much it will be equal to 12 so that is a number of neutrons present in the uh, atom of an uh, element of that is sodium next is magnesium magnesium has the atomic number of 12 so number of protons will be 12 what about the electrons the number of electrons also will be 12 and what about the neutron you have to subtract the atomic number from the mass number that is at mass number is 24 24 minus 12 so number of neutrons also will be 12 
The next element in the periodic table is aluminium with a mass number of 27 and atomic number of 13. So if atomic number is 13, the number of protons will be 13, that is number of positive charges in the nucleus of the atom and the same thing that is the number of electrons which are distributed around the, in different shells that also will be same because number of positive charge will be equal to number of uh, negative charge which makes the nucleus that is uh, the atom of an element has um, neutral. Now let's see how many uh, this one neutrons will be there 27 minus 13 that means how many neutrons will be there so the number of neutrons will be 14 that is the uh, subatomic particle that is neutron present in the nucleus of an atom. Next element is silicon. In silicon the mass number is 28 atomic number is 14 so if atomic number is 14 the number of protons positive charge will be 14 because the atomic number the, is equal to number of protons present in the nucleus of an atom and which will be equal to number of electrons. Now how can you calculate the number of neutrons? Mass number minus four, uh, the atomic number. So mass number is 28 and 28 minus 14 is nothing but it has 14 neutrons present in the nucleus of an atom. The next element that is element number 15 is phosphorus. Phosphorus has a mass number of 31 and the uh, atomic number is 15. So if atomic number is 15 which will be equal to the number of protons present in the nucleus and which also will be equal to the number of electrons present in the various shells of an atom uh, distributed in the around the nucleus of an atom and what about the number of neutrons 31 minus 15 that is equal to 16. So in phosphorus, there are 15 protons in the nucleus of an atom, 16 neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So if you add this, you will get the mass number and number of protons and number of electrons will be same. Next is sulfur. Sulfur, the atomic number is 16, so number of electrons will be 16, number of uh, new, uh, protons also will be 16, the mass number is 32. So how will you get the number of neutrons, 32 minus 16? So that is number of neutrons is number of that is mass number or number of protons minus the mass number you will get the number of neutrons. Next element is chlorine. Chlorine that is the atomic number is 17 mass number is 35. So how can you find out the number of protons which will be equal to the atomic number that is 17. The number of electrons also will be equal to 17. Now what about the neutrons? Neutrons is nothing but mass number minus number of protons or atomic number. So 35 minus 17 that is 18. So that will be the, the number of neutrons, protons and electrons present in chlorine. Now let us see the 18th element in the periodic table that is the noble gas or argon which has the mass number of 40 and atomic number is 18. So number of protons will be 18 which will be equal to number of negatively charged electrons 18. So 40 minus uh, 18. What will be the number of uh, neutrons? So number of neutrons will be equal to 22. So this is how you can find out the number of proton, neutron and electron present in an atom of an element. And from this you can see the atom of each element is different from each other. Different atoms of different elements are different because they have different number of electrons like you can see sodium or magnesium, they have different number of electrons, they have different number of protons and they have different number of neutrons. So, now we can, one more thing we can find out from this is, we can find out whether, what will be the number of electrons present in the outermost shell. That is, the, I told you in the previous class, the number of electrons present in the outermost shell is nothing but, it is known as the valency or the uh, electrons is known as valence electron and how many electrons are present in the outermost shell we can easily find out whether the what is the valency of the element as well as we can find out whether the element is a metal, no, non-metal or a noble gas. Now let us see if there are 11 electrons so you can say I have told you how to get the electronic configuration that means out of 11 electrons that is 2 electrons will be occupying in the K shell so the electronic configuration of sodium will be out of 11, 2 electrons will go and occupy in the K shell. Then L shell can have maximum of 8 electrons. So out of 11, 8 electrons will occupy in the uh, L shell and now 8 plus 2, how many electrons have been occupied now? 10. So 
out of 11, 10 electrons are distributed, 2 in the case shell, so remaining is 9. From the 9 electrons, 8 electrons will be accommodated in the L shell. How many electrons are remaining? 1. So that 1 electron will occupy in the M shell, K, L, M. So this is how you write the electronic configuration of an uh, element. So 2, 8, 1 is the electronic configuration of sodium. Now from this you can see how many electrons are present. So the number of electrons present in the outermost shell, this is K shell, M shell and M. Uh, K, L and M. In K shell maximum number of electrons is 2. It is completely occupied, completely filled shell. L is uh, 8 electrons, it is also completely filled. And remaining electrons, we cannot accommodate the 9 electrons in the L shell because L shell can accommodate maximum of 8 electrons. So remaining one electron will jump and it will be occupying, it will be occupying the new shell that is M. And I told you number of electrons present in the outermost shell is nothing but it is known as a valence electron and we can find out the valency. So here one electron is present in the outermost shell. So the valency of sodium will be plus 1 because uh, the plus charge means during a um, uh, chemical reaction what happens these metals they have the tendency to lose electrons they give away the electrons during a bond formation like sodium when it combines with chlorine sodium the valence is 2 comma 8 comma 1 so during when it forms a bonding with another non metal it has a tendency to lose electrons so the elements will be losing the electron which is present in the outermost shell so when it loses the electron the number of protons will become more than number of the Electron. So it gets converted into an ion and that ion is known as cation. The positively charged atom is known as cation. That is why we are writing a plus one sign. And then if it has a tendency to lose electron, that kind of an element is known as metal. It is known as metal. Okay. Next one. Magnesium. The Number of electrons is 12. So let's see how it can be distributed in the different shell. So out of 12, the K shell can accommodate how many electrons? Only 2. Now how many are remaining there? 10 electrons. Can all the 10 electrons be accommodated in the L shell? No. Because L shell can accommodate only 8 electrons. So out of 10, 8 electrons will be accommodated in the L shell. So remaining how many electrons are there? 2. And when you add all this, you will get the atomic number 2 plus 8, 10, 10 plus 2, 12. So here also you can see the number of that is the valence electron is 2. That means magnesium when it reacts with a non-metal, it has a tendency to lose 2 electron or the combining capacity of the element magnesium is 2. So that means the valency of this magnesium is plus 2. All right. And then, since it has a tendency to lose electron, it is a metal during a bond formation. So, metals, it will lose the electron and how many electrons it is losing, will we can calculate the valency of the that particular element. Next element is aluminium. Aluminium, the atomic number is 13, number of electrons is 13. Now, how these 13 electrons can be distributed? It cannot be present in the same shell. So, out of that, which is the first shell? K. In K shell, how many electrons can be accommodated? 2. According to Bohr and Bury rule. Okay, theory. And next one you can see. So, 2 electrons, remaining electrons. So, remaining electrons, can it be accommodated? 11 electrons are remaining. 13 minus 2. 2 electrons accommodated in the K shell. Remaining how many electrons are there? 11. 11 can it be accommodated in the L shell? No. Maximum number of electrons in the L shell is 8. So, out of that 11, 8 electrons will be accommodated in the L shell. Remaining how many electrons are there? 3. So, 3 shells will be accommodated in the last shell. So, that is a valence electron is 3. That means when aluminium, it forms a bond with a non-metal, then it has a tendency to lose 3 electrons. That means the valency of aluminium is plus 3. That means when it loses the electron, it becomes a cation. That means in an atom, that is here the atom when it is neutral, it has equal number of proton and electron. But during a chemical reaction, the electrons participate in the reaction and electrons are lost or gained or electrons are shared. So when electrons are shared, the number of protons will be more than the number of electrons. 
So that kind of an atom which has a charge is known as ion and with positive charge um, ion is known as cation and then here even it has a tendency to lose electrons so this is also considered as a metal. Next element is silicon. Silicon the mass number is 28 this we have seen it electrons are 14 so the electronic configuration will be 2 comma 8 comma 4 okay and you can see there are 4 electrons present here so the valency of this will be 4. And here you know that the outermost shell, there is one more rule which we have learned. The outermost shell can have maximum of 8 electrons. So 8 electrons that is when the shell is almost half, it is half filled or if it is having electrons more than 3 like for in the valence shell. That kind of atoms instead of losing electron they tie, uh, tend to gain electron. Because in order to lose 4 electrons or 5 electrons the atom has to that is more energy has to be uh, um, uh, um, taken. So in order to reduce that, the energy which is lost by the atom of an element, these uh, that is when the balance electron becomes more than 3, 4, 5, 6 and all, those elements will have a tendency to gain electron. So the elements which try to, which tend to gain electrons during a chemical bonding or chemical reaction, we call them as non-metals. So silicon is a non-metal. It is, at, it is a metalloid also because it has a, it exhibits characteristics of both metal and non-metal. So the valency of silicon will be 4. And next one is phosphorus. In phosphorus you can see that, that is how the electrons 15, how it can be distributed. First shell 2, second shell 8 and next one will be 5. So the valency of this will be, that is phosphorus has one more tendency. It can uh, share 5 electrons or it can share uh, 3 electrons. So phosphorus has variable valency of 3 or 5. That, uh, that means the phosphorus when it reacts with chlorine. So it will form PCl3, phosphorus trichloride or phosphorus pentachloride. So there is a sharing of electrons when non-metal and non-metal will combine. So the phosphorus has a variable valency of 3 and 5. So it is losing the electron that uh, it is gaining the electron that means the number of electrons will be more than the number of proton that is why we put a negative sign minus 3 and minus 5 and here in silicon also we can put it as minus 4 and here the when it is gaining the electron it forms uh, that is the atom will be negatively charged because when it gains electron it becomes negative so an atom carrying a negative charge is known as anion they form anions and since it is gaining the electron so it is a non-metal Next one, sulfur. Sulfur, atomic number 16. So the electrons will be distributed as 2, 8, 6. Here in the outermost shell is uh, how many electrons can be accommodated? 8. So it is almost getting filled. Now there are 6 electrons here. So what the uh, this atom of sulfur during a chemical reaction will do? Can it lose all the 6 uh, electrons? It will not go for that. It will try to gain 2 electrons. That means that is here and when you are finding out the valency of the non-metal, you have to subtract the valence electron from the, from the uh, how many electrons are present in the outermost shell. So in the outermost shell, how many electrons are, should be present? 8. So 8 minus 6. So the valency of sulfur will be that is minus 2. Minus 2 and minus is nothing but it shows that it's an anion. It is gaining the electron. The number of electrons becomes more than the number of protons. So it is minus 2. So because it is gaining the electron, it is no, it is also considered as a non-metal. The next element is chlorine. Chlorine, the number of electrons are 17. So the configuration will be 2 electrons will be occupied in the first shell remaining that is 8 electrons will be uh, filled in the L shell remaining how many electrons are there 7 so in the last shell 7 electrons will be accommodated 7 means it is only 1 less than 8 so the atom of a chlorine will not um, try to lose all the 7 electrons during a bond formation that time it will try to gain 1 electron so 7 plus 1 it will become 8 so it will gain 1 electron so 8 minus 7, 1. 
So the valency of uh, chlorine is minus 1. So it is gaining the electrons, so it is known as non-metal. And then the 18th element in the periodic table is argon, that is atomic number 18 or number of electrons is 18. So how the electrons are distributed? Out of 18, 2 electrons will be distributed in the K shell. Remaining how many electrons are there? 18 minus 2, 16. Out of 16, the, how many electrons can be accommodated in the L shell? 8. So, 8 electrons. Remaining how many are there? 8 electrons. So, 8 plus 2, 10. Remaining 8 electrons, that 8 electrons will be occupying in the M shell. So, this one is nothing but a valence electron. That means... It is a completely filled shell. So in argon, that is the 18th element in the periodic table, all the three shells are completely filled. K shell has, can accommodate three, two electrons, so it is completely filled. L shell can accommodate eight electrons, so it is completely filled. And the M shell, which is uh, which can have, it can actually accommodate 18 electrons, but there is a rule, boron Burry's rule, that is the outermost shell, this is a valence shell. Valence shell can accommodate only 8 electrons, so it is completely filled. So if an element, the outermost shell is completely filled, that means 8 electrons, so that element will be chemically inert, it will not participate in any reaction, it is stable, it is known as stable electronic configuration. So it will not participate in any reaction, it is inert, it is chemically unreactive. So this element is known as, it is, uh, we call them as noble gas noble gas or inert gas and all the elements which are present in group number 18 that is extreme right hand side those elements are called noble gas or inert gases because they are highly they have stable electronic configuration of either two electrons in the outermost shell or eight electrons in the outermost shell having two electrons in the outermost shell is known as duplet having eight electrons in the outermost shell is known as octet Let's see the atomic uh, structure of first taking elements, how the electrons are distributed, that is structure of an atom. This is the first element, uh, that is uh, element number 11, which we had studied, that is sodium. So sodium, the atomic number is 11. So proton, neutron, and electron, as I told you, you have to write it down. And then, how the electrons are distributed. So here, what this is the um, nucleus of the atom of sodium, which has protons and neutrons, collectively called nucleons. It has 11 proton, 12 neutron and it has 11 electrons. So 11 electrons will be distributed in different shell. So the first shell is K. All of you should label the number shell K, L, M. In the first shell, out of 11, 2 electrons will be accommodated. Remaining, there are 9 electrons. So the say L shell can accommodate only 8 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 electrons will be accommodated in L shell. So remaining how many electrons are there? One. So that one electron, because it will not be accommodated in 11, because uh, in L shell, because maximum number of electrons in L shell is, uh, can it can be accommodated is 8. So that one electron will be accommodated in the last shell, that is M shell, that is 1. So the electronic configuration, from the diagram you can find out, that is first letter is the K shell, first number is the K shell, second corresponds to the L shell and third one corresponds to the M shell. So K, L, M. So K, how many electrons are there? 2. L, 8. And then remaining that is M shell, that is 1. So the number of electrons present in the outermost uh, shell is known as valence electron. So the valency of uh, sodium will be plus 1. That means it can gain, uh, it can uh, lose 1 electron to attain stable electronic configuration that is 8 electrons in the outermost shell. So if it loses one electron, so the valency, the um, electronic configuration of sodium ion will be 2 comma 8. So what happened? 8 is a stable electronic configuration. So elements will lose the electron or gain the electron to attain the stable electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas, which is stable electronic configuration. That is having 8 electron in the outermost shell or 2 electron in the outermost shell like helium. So here magnesium, that is, so atomic number is 12, so how the electrons will be distributed? 2, 8 and 2 electrons in the outermost shell. So the valency is 2, so it can lose 2 electron and then it can get the stable electronic configuration of neon, that is 2, 8. Aluminium, aluminium, the electronic configuration, that is the atomic number is 13. So in the K shell, there will be 2 electrons accommodated, 
n shell uh, l shell will be a and the remaining three electrons will be shown in the last shell that is m shell so k l m so the electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 3 it has a it can lose three electron to get the stable electronic configuration of 2 comma 8 having eight electrons in the outermost shell so and this is the electronic configuration of aluminium 2 comma 8 comma 3 valency is plus 3 next is silicon in the same way you can show for silicon that is 2 comma 8 comma 4 2 electrons 8 electrons and 4 next you can see in phosphorus also the atomic number is 15 so 2 electrons in the first shell 8 electrons in the second shell and remaining 5 will be accommodated in the last shell and from here onwards, silicon, the outermost shell is almost getting fully, uh, fully filled. That is, 4 is half of 8. So, what happened? The silicon onwards, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, which has the valence electron of 4, 5 or 6, 4, 5, 6 or 7 in the outermost shell, they have the tendency to gain electron. Then, they will not try to lose electron. So, the valency will be, how you can get the valency? Subtract that valence electron from 8. Maximum number of electron is 8. So, 8 minus 4, valency will be 4. Here, the valency of phosphorus, 5 electrons are there. So, 8 minus 5, minus 3. Here, 6 electrons in the case of sulfur, 2, 8, 6. 2 in the K shell, 8 in the L shell, M shell will be having 6. So, all the 6 energy, uh, 6 electrons to be lost more energy has to be needed. So, before, we, uh, for that what happens, um, sulfur, that is non-metals like silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, they try to gain electron. So, here you can get the valency by 8 minus 6 is 2. Minus 2 means it is gaining the electrons. So, electrons will be more than protons. So, minus sign. Chlorine, here the outermost shell is almost completely filled, 2, 8, 7. And outermost shell can have 8. So, what happened? It can gain 1 electron. So, the valency of chlorine will be minus 1. So, what will be the electronic configuration of chlorine? 17 electrons are there. Out of 17, 2 electrons will be accommodated in the first shell. 8 in the second shell. And remaining 7 will be occupying in the outermost shell. So, all of you should count properly and fill the orbital. So, that is from sodium to argon, you can see there will be 3 shells. K, L, M. And then hydrogen and helium, we saw there was only K shell. And then next one, lithium to neon, K and L shell. L shell was completely filled in the case of neon. And here, this is uh, these elements belong to period number 3 of the periodic table, which has 3 shell. And by the time you come to the first element here, you know that 1 electron will be there in the cell, first shell. Then, uh, that is in the last shell, that is L shell, 2, 3, 4, it will be increasing 1 by 1. And by the time you come to the last element of period 3, that is argon, the outermost shell will be completely filled. And here, argon, I told you, the valency is 0 because outermost shell is completely filled. So, it, during, it will not form any compound, that is, it will not go for a chemical bonding, it will not lose electron or gain electron or share electron. So, they are known as inert gases or noble gases, the valency is 0. So, all of you should know very nicely how to calculate the valency and find, write or draw this diagram very neatly in your notebook. Isotopes. So generally we have seen, that is in the previous I told you, that when we are discussing about, about atom of sodium, metal or aluminium, magnesium, we have seen that atoms of different elements are different because they have different number of protons, neutrons and electrons. But it is also seen that atoms of the same element is, are also found to be different. Now, how is that possible? So, even that was seen in the case of certain elements like hydrogen, carbon, chlorine, bromine, iron. That is, they have same atomic number. That is, they have same number of protons and electrons. But, they have different mass numbers. That is, the number of neutrons present in the atom of these elements will be, that is the same element. The atoms will be, two different atoms will be having different number of neutrons. That leads to the different mass number. So that kind, that kind of concept, that is, uh, element, atoms are known as isotopes. Now you can see, for example, that is, isotopes are nothing but atoms of same element which have different mass number. They have same atomic number, but they have different mass number. So how, which subatomic particle they'll be having different? So the subatomic particle, that is, neutrons will be different in two, di uh, two different atoms of the same element. For example, the 
three different isotopes of hydrogen atom is found to found that is one kind of hydrogen is all the hydrogen has a atomic number of 1 1 and 1 that means all of them have one proton and one electron but you can see here in the first case that is the mass of hydrogen is 1 the second atom of hydrogen it was found the mass of this hydrogen atom was found to be 2 unit and the third one has 3 unit that means they have different number of neutrons in it let's check so the first one hydrogen so here the proton that is um, this is the mass number which is written on top and subscript it is the atomic number so that is atomic number one is number of proton will be one number of electron will be one how will you find out number of neutron that is mass number minus atomic number of minus proton so that will be zero so in hydrogen atom there are no neutrons zero neutron in the nucleus of an atom of hydrogen another kind of hydrogen atom it was found to be little heavier than this hydrogen so this hydrogen it is known as protium this isotope of hydrogen is known as protium the second type of uh, atom of hydrogen was found to be having the mass of two unit so here the atomic number is one same element so number of proton will be same number of electron also will be same but what about the number of neutron two minus one one so here the another uh, isotope of hydrogen was found where the mass was slightly heavier than that of protium having two unit so which is having one neutron but here it was zero neutron so this hydrogen isotope of hydrogen is known as deuterium and the third isotope of hydrogen with three that is mass is three unit so number of proton is one number of electron is one because all of them have same atomic number it is the same atom of hydrogen but these three are known as isotopes so three minus one the number of neutron will be two so you can see that three different that is isotopes of hydrogen are found that is three different kinds of atoms of same element which have same atomic number but different mass number so that are known as isotopes those kind of atoms are known as isotopes so here the third one is known as tritium tritium and it is given by the letter capital T deuterium is represented by capital D and this is hydrogen so when uh, deuterium you can see it is used in the nuclear reactor in the heavy water D2O H2O is a water which we are drinking the heavy water is nothing but it is we are having little bit heavier mass so it is D2O and these are used in the nuclear reactor another isotopes of another element you can see carbon carbon is nothing but two isotopes are found carbon 12 and carbon 14 so in the first one you can see this atom of carbon number of uh, atomic number is 6 so proton is 6 number of electron is 6 and neutron will be 12 minus 6 number of neutron is 6 but another kind of atom of carbon that is isotope of uh, carbon the u that is mass is found to be as 14 unit so the proton will be 6 number of electron is 6 what about number of neutron 14 minus 6 8 so here you can see that is though these are known as isotopes that is carbon 12 and carbon 14 carbon 12 we take it for calculating the mass of other elements and all here you can see the first isotope of carbon proton is 6 neutron is 6 electron is 6 whereas in carbon 14 proton is 6 neutron is 8 and electron is 6 so what is which subatomic particle is different than this the subatomic particle is neutron that means they have the same number of uh, proton and electron but they have different nucleons the mass is different so these kind of atoms of same element which have different mass number they are known as isotopes another example you can see of isotope is chlorine in chlorine atom there are that is out of four chlorine also the um, two different isotopes are found chlorine that is with mass number as 35 unit atomic number is 17 another atom of chlorine is found which is having the mass of 37 unit and atomic number 7 so from this we can calculate number of proton is 17 number of electron is same 17 but what about the number of neutron number of neutron is 18 so here you can see it uh, the one of the chlor isotope of chlorine having 17 proton 17 electron and 18 neutron here you can see proton electron and neutron 
so number of proton will be 17 number of electron will be 17 and then number of neutron will be you can subtract it it will be equal to 20 so here the sub atomic particle neutron is different so that means it is the two different kinds of atoms of the same element having different mass number so the nucleons are different nucleon is nothing but proton plus neutron gives a neutron so nucleons are different in this so this is known as isotope and here the mass of chlorine if the mass of if an element has one atom only the mass of that element is taken as that mass number but if an element has many isotopes so average of those isotopes are taken and calculated and that is taken as a mass number of that element and you can see in the periodic table that is some of the elements have the mass number in decimal that is because the average of this isotopes atoms of different uh, the same element the average is taken and then it is calculated for example the um, this one we can, let's calculate what is the mass average mass given to the uh, atom of chlorine so here in the nature it is seen that out of that is every four atoms three atom the mass that is uh, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 three atoms are of chlorine 35 and one atom is that of chlorine 37 so the two diff uh, different isotopes of chlorine they are found to be in the ratio of 3 is to 1 so how you can calculate the average mass of this chlorine atom so 35 so you can see the first one 35 into 3 that will be 105 and 1 out of 4 1 is uh, 1 atom is of chlorine 37 so 37 into 1 that is 37 now add these two so the average mass will be how much 142 so 142 how many atoms different atoms of chlorine are seen four out of four three atoms are chlorine 35 and one atom is that of chlorine 37 so how you can find out what is the average mass mass of chlorine 35 into 305 37 into 1 37 add it up you will get 142 divided by how many atoms four so you will get the average mass of chlorine as 35.5 unit that is how you can calculate the mass of certain atoms of element which have the that is so many isotopes are formed so you can find out the average mass of that by this by taking the average of total number of atoms of that element present in the nature so this is the very important concept and isotopes are used it has different applications so like uh, cobalt one isotope of cobalt it is used in treating cancer then certain uranium uh, radioactive element its isotope is used in the nuclear reactor carbon 14 is used for finding out the age of the fossils okay so it is known as carbon dating so like that the isotopes also have various uses uh, we use the isotopes of different atoms of elements in our uh, different applications so now let's study about the next concept that is nothing but isobars on the yet another interesting topic there that is known as isobars so we have studied what are isotopes isotopes are atoms of the same element which have that is same atomic number but they have different mass number like hydrogen hydrogen one having one unit and another atom of hydrogen having two unit and another hydrogen atom having three unit so but all the hydrogen that is three isotopes of hydrogen they have same atomic number but mass number is different now that iron is having 60 different uh, isotopes of iron has iron metal has been formed to be naturally occurring now uh, what are isobars isobars are nothing but atoms of different element they have different atomic number but they uh, that is but they will have same mass number so those atoms pairs of atoms are of different elements with different atomic number but having same mass number they are known as isobars in isotopes what happens same element same atomic number the different mass number but here it is uh, isobars are nothing but atoms of different element with different atomic number but having same mass number for example we can take the example of argon with the atomic number 18 mass number 40 and another element calcium atomic number 20 and mass number is 40 so you can see these two they have say that is different atomic number but the mass number is same that means they have the same number of nucleons that is proton electron and neutron so here you can see number of protons is 18 number of electrons is 18 and whereas the number of neutron is 22 
and here in this case that is uh, another the isobar of argon you can see here number of proton is 20 number of electron is 20 and you can see number of neutron is 20 so you can see the nucleons will be equal to 40 and here also you can see 18 plus 22 the nucleons number is 40 so they have the same mass but they have different uh, atomic number so those pairs of uh, elements are known as isobars so in this chapter we have studied about the started studying with the discovery of subatomic particles like proton neutrons and electron with Rutherford alpha particle scattering experiment of uh, the discovery of atomic nucleus then we have studied what are atomic number then um, mass number how to calculate number of proton neutron and electron valency of elements and based on the valency we can tell which is metal non-metal and we can also tell which is noble gas stable electronic configuration unstable electronic configuration some elements are reactive because they don't have stable electronic configuration they make compounds by losing the electron or gaining the electron or by sharing the electron then finally we have learned about what are isotopes and then the applications of isotopes like some of the isotopes are used in the treatment of cancer some are used in the nuclear reactors and then Finally, we studied about isobars, isobars that is atoms of different element having different atomic number but having same mass number. So that pairs of atoms they are known as isobars. So now to understand a little bit more clearly I want you to look into the slides and write the notes neatly and understand the concept very well. Thank you children. So children. This is the atomic structure of elements from 1 to 18 and since we have already uh, drawn the diagrams of atomic structure of uh, elements from 1 to 10, I want all of you to draw the atomic structure from sodium to argon. So here um, the first element hydrogen we have discussed already with atomic number 1, electronic configuration is 1 that means K shell has 1 electron. Helium with atomic number 2, electronic configuration is 2 that means it has one shell, K shell and two electrons are completely filled. So the number which is written below is electronic configuration. Lithium, atomic number three. So out of three, two electrons in the K shell and remaining one electron will be uh, filled, filled, you know, getting filled in the L shell. So the electronic configuration of lithium is 2 comma 1. Similarly, beryllium is 2 comma 2, boron is 2 comma 3, carbon is 2 comma 4, nitrogen is 2 comma 5, oxygen is 2 comma 6, Fluorine is 2,7 and neon is 2,8. That is, when you add the atomic number, it will be equal to the, uh, when you add the electronic configuration, it will be equal to the atomic number of that element. So, here in oxygen, you can see if the atomic number is 8, out of 8, 2 electrons will get occupied in the K shell and then 8 minus 2, 6. 6 electrons will be accommodated in the L shell. So, you can see in uh, period number 2, uh, all the elements have, that is from lithium to neon they have two shells K shell and L shell and by the time you come to neon the outermost shell L shell is completely filled with eight electrons that is atomic number 10 so the electronic configuration will be 2 comma 8 two electrons in the K shell and eight electrons in the L shell now the maximum number of electrons in the L shell can be eight it cannot be more than that so the next element in the periodic table is with atomic number 11 is sodium sodium out of uh, 11 electron two electrons will get occupied in the k shell next shell is l l shell will be having eight electrons and what is the maximum number of electrons in the l that is eight so it cannot have two comma nine because eight is the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the l shell so remaining one electron will get occupied in the last shell that is m shell so you have three shells in the period number 3 that is K, L and M. K shell will have 2 electron, L shell will have 8 electrons and M shell will have 1 electron. So when you add a 2 plus 8 plus 1 that will be equal to atomic number of sodium. Next element is magnesium. So you, you can see the how the electrons are getting filled up. 2 in the first shell, next 8 and then remaining 2 electrons in the last shell, M shell. So Aluminium with atomic number 13, electronic configuration is 2, 8, 3 and you can see how nicely the electrons are getting distributed here. Two electrons will be occupied in the first shell out of A13. 
then remaining 11 electrons from 11 electrons 8 electrons will get occupied in the L shell remaining how many are there 3 3 electrons will get occupied in the large shell that is M so similarly silicon with atomic number 14 phosphorus 15 sulfur with atomic number 16 chlorine with atomic number 17 you have to draw the three shells K L M and then you have to show the electronic configuration and show the electrons in the same way innermost shell is K then L and M K shell will have two electrons then L shell will have eight electron and finally in chlorine the last shell will have seven electrons then argon you can see this is a here in this uh, particular element you can see atomic number is 18 so out of 18 two electrons will get will be filled in the K shell which is completely filled then how many are remaining 16 out of 16 how, how many electrons can be accommodated in the L that is 8 so 8 electrons will get occupied 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 in the L shell remaining how many are there 8 electrons that 8 electrons will get occupied in the last shell so the electronic configuration of R bond will be 2 comma 8 comma 8 so these are the electronic configuration what I have written all of you must write it below each uh, structure of an element next this is uh, a table which will be helpful for you to find out how many num number of protons neutrons and electrons are there for the elements element number 11 to element number 18 sodium magnesium aluminium they are metals so they have the at, this is a mass number atomic number mass number will be equal to the number of proton which will be equal to number of electrons which will be 11 and you can get the number of neutrons from by subtracting atomic number from mass number so 23 minus 11 you'll get 12 so here sodium magnesium aluminium they are metals metals have the tendency to lose electron when they form a compound next element you can see silicon atomic number 14 mass number is 28 so it has 14 proton 14, 14 neutrons and 14 electron neutrons can be calculated by subtracting atomic number from mass number it's a non-metal similarly next element is phosphorus then sulfur chlorine with atomic number 15 16 and 17 here number of proton, neutron, electron, same way you have to calculate it and then you can see phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine are also non-metal. They have a tendency to gain electron when they form a compound to form the stable electronic configuration. Argon is with atomic number 13, mass number is 40. So its number of proton is 18, electron is 18 and number of neutron is 40 minus 18 that is 22. It's a noble gas. Now the Electronic configuration, as I told you, please write down the electronic configuration, hydrogen 1, helium 1, lithium 2,1, beryllium 2,2, boron 2,3, carbon 2,4. This 2 is a K shell. Then remaining electrons will be occupying in the next shell. So this is a first shell, second shell and third shell. So they don't have any electrons in the last shell. So they, don't be, they won't be having M shell. So here the valency of hydro, valency is nothing but how many electrons are present in the last shell, valence shell. So hydrogen has one electron, valency is one. Helium, the outermost shell is complete. So helium, when it has got outermost shell is complete, it will not gain any electron or lose any electron or share any electron. They are inert. So the valency is zero. They are, it's a noble gas or inert gas belonging to group number 18. Now lithium, beryllium, boron are metal. The outermost shell has one electron, two electrons and three electrons. So lithium, the valency is plus one. Beryllium is plus 2 and boron is plus 3. So how many electrons are there in the last shell that will be their valency. Now that is for the metals. For non-metals like carbon onwards, the outermost shell is getting almost filled because the closer mark is 8. So the valency for non-metal is obtained by subtracting 4 from octet. 8 minus 4, 4. So that is the valency of carbon. Now valency of nitrogen is outermost shell has 5 electron, 8 minus 5 is 3. Oxygen 8 minus 6 is 2, fluorine 8 minus 7 is 1, and neon finally the outermost shell is complete. So it is inert, it will not gain electron, lose electron, or share electron. So it is chemically inactive. It, the valency is 0. And minus is put because they are gaining the electron. So electron the sign is minus. So minus is put in front of this valence numbers. Now the next element number 11 to 18. So element number sodium, magnesium, aluminium, they all are metals. They have, this is the outermost shell. They have three shells, K, L and M. Uh, the electronic configuration is 2, 8, 1. Outermost shell has one electron. So valency of sodium is plus 1. Magnesium is plus 2. Aluminium, it has three electrons in the last shell. So it is plus 3. 
So valency of metals are in positive, they form cation because they will lose electron. So proton will be positively charged. So they have more number of proton. That is why plus sign is put over here. Now silicon, phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine. The outermost shell is almost getting filled up. So how you can calculate for the non-metals 8 minus 4, 4. So 8 minus 5 is 3. 8 minus 6 for sulfur is 2. And 8 minus 7 for chlorine is minus 1. Minus is put because they are gaining electron. Electron is negatively charged. So minus is put here. And the atom will change into ion. It is known as anion. And finally, organ is atomic number 18 with all the three shells completely filled. 2, 8, 8 has got octet configuration. So 8 minus 8 means 0. It cannot gain any electron or lose any electron or share any electron. So they are chemically inert. So that is the reason I have given over here why the completely filled electrons, they are inert. Because they are, the outermost shell is completely filled, they will not gain any electrons. So they are called noble gas. Valency is zero. They have got stable electronic configuration. And why all the other elements in the periodic table are active? Because they have to attain stable electronic configuration like the noble gas. Like they have to get duplet or octet. That is why they lose gain or share electron. That is why they are chemically active. So duplet configuration means having two electrons in the last shell like helium. Octet configuration means having eight electrons in the outermost shell like neon and argon. It is known as octet. Now, atoms of element, how it will achieve stable electronic configuration by sharing, gaining or losing electron. Valency of the electron is nothing but number of electrons lost, gain or shared. So as to make the octet of electrons in the outermost shell. That is a combining capacity during the bond formation. Now, what is the valency of sodium ion? So, see, sodium atom is 2, 8, 1. So, during a chemical bond formation, this one electron will be lost. So, the it will form an ion. So, we call it as sodium ion and it is form, given as Na+. Plus. plus means proton is more. Electron is lost. One electron is given away. So, the electronic configuration will be 2, 8. So, the valency of sodium ion will be 0. It has got the configuration like noble gas, neon. Same here, chlorine also, chloride ion. The atom is uh, electronic configuration of um, chlorine atom is 2, 8, 7. So during a bond formation, it will gain one electron in the outermost shell. So it becomes 2, 8, 8 like argon. So it has got noble electronic uh, that is inert uh, gas electronic configuration. So the valency of chloride ion is 0. Next, this is how the bond formation is just for you to understand it. Sodium is 2, 8, 1, chloride ion, chlorine atom, how it forms ion and it combines. We will be studying more about this in third chapter. Now, isotopes, atoms having uh, same atomic number but different mass number. Learn all the three isotopes of hydrogen, protium, deuterium and tritium. They have same atomic number but mass number is 1, 2 and 3. Then, uh, the example, isotopes of carbon is carbon 12 and carbon 14. Chlorine is chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Then how to calculate the average atomic uh, mass of chlorine? You have to take how many isotopes of chlorine are there, add it up and then you have to take the, that is three atoms of chlorine are uh, 35 and one is 37, add it and then you find the average divided by 4, you will get the average atomic mass of chlorine as 35.5. Similarly, bromine, this question I have shown you how you can calculate the, um, that is uh, average atomic mass of bromine atom. So, read the question and then you can find out how to do it. You have to take the mass and then divide it and multiply by the uh, atomic mass of two isotopes of bromine and you can get the average mass of bromine. Next, uh, the percentage of uh, element is 16.2. Uh, so, how you will find out what is the percentage of each isotopes of this element. So, you have to take 16 divided by this mass 16.2 and then into 100. So, the other isotopes of this element, X is 18. So, 18 divided by 16.2 into 100, you will get the average percentage of this isotope. These two isotopes are an isotope of element X. Now, isobars are elements with different atomic number but same mass number. Example, calcium atomic number is 20. Argon is atomic number 18. But these two elements have same mass number 40 and 40. So, this is a pair of elements which are called isobars. Elements having different atomic number but same mass number. Now, this is a worksheet which you have to do it. I have told you, given you the uh, sodium, aluminum, phosphorus and chlorine. Atomic number is given. Using this, you have to write how many proton, neutron and electrons are there in each of the following element. And state any two uses of isotopes. 